My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, for the most part, on Friday, together, we track along on the same page. For the most part, we are together on Friday, together in message. Every once in a while, it may slip right by. Recently, someone asked me, what in the world I was talking about up here for the past several weeks. Can you remember the topic at hand? If you haven't figured it out or you've forgotten, the past couple of weeks I've been addressing your performance. Addressing performance. The reason this topic is of paramount importance is because our performance is the basis of what we will experience. Our performance is currently being tested and it will be how we are judged. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mulk says who has created death and life that he may test you which of you is best in deed he has created this life and the death that is soon to overtake us. Last week was a reality check. Having lost one of our own, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created our lives to test us, to test our performance. Who is best indeed? Not who is most indeed, but who is best indeed. Performance is being judged. The nature of our performance also impacts our quality of life now, let alone the hereafter. How we perform has a direct impact on the quality of life we experience now, and certainly it does in the next life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man amila saliha min dhakarin wa untha wa huwa mu'min falanuhiyannahu hayatan tayyibah Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer or she, we will surely cause him to live a good life. To have a good life. Righteousness, your performance, your deeds. And we will surely give them their reward in the hereafter according to the best of what they used to do. What we do affects now and later. Allah mentions the nature of not only good deeds and their positive impact on our lives, but also mentions the evil deeds, the bad deeds, and the negative consequences. Reported by Imam Muslim, this hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَا عِبَادِي إِنَّمَا هِيَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ أُحْسِيهَا لَكُمْ ثُمَّ أُوَفِيكُمْ إِيَّاهَا فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَ My servants, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith Qudsi, these are your deeds. These are your deeds I am gathering for you by which I will reward you. I'm gathering your deeds, taking a record of what you do, and accordingly you will be rewarded. So if you find something good, praise Allah, alhamdulillah. If you find something else besides good, 
You can blame no one but Shapon? No. You can blame no one but yourselves, your performance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةً فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٌ And whatever strikes you of disaster, it is for what your hands have earned. And He pardons much. Brothers and sisters, if you find yourself dissatisfied with something in your life, or something happening around the world, you are dissatisfied with something happening around the world, this is the starting point to address the problem. Performance. There are dozens of things we could talk about. Dozens of subjects, specific, highly detailed subjects, occurrences, political events that could be addressed right here in this forum, on this podium. And guess what? They would probably be much more sensational than this topic itself. However, I believe it's important that we search for the root causes of such problems instead of constantly slapping band-aids on everything. Put a band-aid, you feel a little good. Haven't addressed the real problem. What we need to do is improve our performance when it comes to good deeds. To improve our performance when it comes to good deeds, and guess what? We will find good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ If you find good, then praise Allah. وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكْ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَ If you find something else, don't blame anyone but yourself. It all comes back to our performance. To increase that top performance. To achieve top performance, we must be in top condition. If we want to do our best, guess what? We have to be our best. We have to be our best selves. So I want to draw your attention to a very important factor which directly affects performance. Draw your attention to one verse in the Quran that deals with performance and a very important element that is integral to being a top performer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha rusulu kulu min al-tayyibat wa'amalu saliha inni bima ta'amaluna alim Oh, you messengers, eat of the tayyibat. All kinds of halal legal permissible foods and perform righteous deeds eat and perform indeed I of what you do am knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to eat good foods and then perform righteous deeds Imam Ibn Kathir no stranger to us here he says Allah commands his servants and messengers to eat lawful food and to do righteous deeds, which indicates that eating what is lawful helps one to do righteous deeds. Eating helps you perform. On a very physical level, we can understand it's like fuel, but there's also a very spiritual level to eating halal, tayyib, as it's related to your performance as a believer. Listen to this, okay? You are what you eat. You've probably heard that saying. You are what you eat because nutritionists in 
the Western world, have been repeating that phrase since the 1920s. You are what you eat. The concept of that originated much earlier. That what you eat has an impact on who you are, how you perform. In fact, that idea is embedded in our tradition. The idea that you are what you eat is embedded in the Islamic tradition. The beginner student of hadith, prophetic tradition, the beginner student, not advanced, not PhD, not a master, a beginner level, elementary, can attest to this fact because the 10th hadith, the 10th hadith of Imam Nawawi's 40 hadith, this is a beginner level book. Imam Nawawi's 40 hadith is the first book you pick up to learn when you study hadith. Number 10, meaning you didn't even get past a quarter of the text, only 10 hadith in. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Allah the Almighty is good, tayyib. Inna Allah tayyib. And accepts only that which is good. Allah has commanded the believers to do that which He has commanded His messengers. So the Almighty has said, Ya ayyuha rusul kulu min al-tayyibati wa'amalu saliha. O messengers, eat of the good halal foods and do righteous good deeds. Another verse, He says, O you who believe, eat of the lawful things and what we have provided you. Then the Prophet ﷺ went on to mention a man to give an example of how important this is, this concept of what you eat and what you do. The man having journeyed very far, unkept and dirty, spreads his hands out to the heavens, calling upon his Lord, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, how many times have we made such a cry? Ya Allah, solve the problems of the world, solve the problems of my country, solve the problems of my region, of my family, of my life. Help me, relieve me, save me, give me salvation. Oh my Lord, while his food is haram, his drink is haram, his clothing, it is haram, he's been nourished by the impermissible. فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ how is it possible that such a person would be answered? Because what he consumed impacted in a very negative way his spiritual existence. Brothers and sisters, one of the greats of the companions of Nabas radiallahu anhu expounded further hidden it home for us while we've come for prayer. He said, radiallahu anhu, la yakbulallahu salat imri'in fi jawfihi haram. Allah will not accept the prayer of someone who is filled with impermissible. Filled themselves. Something that is impermissible. They're consuming that which Allah despises. And then they turn, Allahu Akbar hoping that he will accept for them their prayers. It doesn't mean stop praying. No, you will pray and you will have fulfilled the basic responsibility. However, the ajr, the thawab, it's lost. The benefit of it will not be found in the next life. You will not be held accountable for not praying, which is much worse by the way. But the investment that you're making in this life for the next, zero ROI. You are what you eat. Spiritually that is. By limiting your consumption to what is permissible, you will secure the hard-earned reward of your performance. Your performance here is in jeopardy. 
by consuming the halal, the tayyib, you secure that performance and the reward. If you widen your diet, widen that diet to include all types of things, permissible and permissible doesn't matter, you'll spoil that reward, you'll lose the benefit of those deeds. بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا في كما يحب ربنا ويرضى نصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإسان إلى يوم الدين Brothers and sisters Hopefully we're on the same page now See why it's important to talk about being your best self Your performance is in jeopardy if you're not your best self, you're not performing at full capacity. You're not taking advantage of the tools, the means, the avenues that Allah has provided. Food plays a big role in our life. For our community, we're no exception. We love to gather and we love to share food with one another. In fact, our events are most populated when food is involved. Free dinner, free lunch, 50% or more extra for the turnout. But what we eat not only does it have an impact on our spiritual self, but it has a very clear pack a very clear impact on the physical body. That's how crucial it is. It's not just one dimensional. It's multi-dimensional food and its impact. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he addressed this as a warning. Alhamdulillah, it's Jummah, you can't run away. Prophet Sallallahu says, ما ملأ آدمي وعاء شر من بطن He says, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, man does not fill a container worse than his own stomach. Man does not fill a container worse than his stomach. Fill your pockets, Bismillah. Fill your home with children, Bismillah. Fill your life with friends. Not so much here. Prophet ﷺ, this is the worst container to fill. The worst container. Says, Bihasib ibn Adam akulatun yuqimna sulba. Sufficient for man is morsels which will keep his back upright. Just enough to keep going. Keep the tank full enough for the car to move. Prophet Sallallahu he says, but in kana la mahala, if there's no way to do this, no way to just go off of the minimum for food, he says, فَثُلُثٌ لِطَعَامِ وَثُلُثٌ لِشَرَابِ وَثُلُثٌ لِلَفْسِ لِنَفَسِ Then a third for your food, a third for your drink, and a third to breathe. Understand. This report by Imam al tirmidhi Understand, this is not the norm. We all know the third rule. It's the golden rule for food. One third for food, one third for drink, one third enough to breathe. This isn't the norm. This is the exception. The norm is to eat light. Keep it light, less than a third. This is when you're pushed. You're a guest. You know how it is when you're a guest. To be generous, your host says, eat, you haven't eaten. Eat, you haven't eaten. You can eat, you haven't eaten. Three times is enough, by the way. So you feel obliged to eat more, to eat more so that you don't upset your, your host, and that's perfectly fine. 
from time to time. When you hit that third, you know, look, we need to pump the brakes. If you go over on the occasion, okay. But to make it a habit that it's here, full camel. <laughs> Prophet ﷺ said, this is the most evil container to fill. Why is that? We love food. We enjoy food. Food tastes good. Sometimes it makes me feel good. When I'm stressed, I sit down to a nice big bowl of add your favorite dish. Feel better. One of the greats of the past, polymath of this Ummah Ibn al Jawzi, rahimahullah, expounded upon the evil nature of filling the stomach. He says it causes the body to become flabby, overweight. The body becomes lazy. It causes sleepiness and dullness of the mind. When you eat a great deal, the stomach requires circulation of blood. Pulls the blood to that area. It's cloudy. Sleepy. We know how it is after that big plate of biryani. Eating a whole box of pizza. Man, I just need to relax. Take a little nap. Becomes two hours. Subhanallah. Where'd the time go? Clouds the mind to the point that it will impede the ability to think clearly and to remember things. Overeating. Gluttony does away with acumen. Gluttony does away with acumen, brightness. Does away with it. He says, Al bitna tudhibul fitna. To be gluttonous, it removes your acumen. He says it's the cause of horrid diseases. We are in no short supply of medical professionals today. They can attest to this fact. He says moderation is not to eat until you satisfy your desire. Look here. What does it mean to be moderate in eating? Not to eat until you satisfy that craving but rather to stop while you still want to eat a little more. Just to walk away just before you feel like I'm done. Just the last stage of moderation is what the Prophet wasallam said, a third for food, a third for drink, and a third to breathe. This is the last stage of moderation. When you exceed that, it is excessive. Eating moderately is healthy for the body, prevents illness, reduces sleep, and guess what else? Reduces your rations. The amount of food you need to eat, basically, you'll save some money, believe it or not. There's a lot of benefits, right? You don't have to sleep as much, your mind is clear, you're saving money on medical bills, and the pantry is not as expensive anymore. Less grocery store runs, less waste of time, etc. It's a win-win to be on the prophetic diet. These symptoms, my, but this is what Imam Ibn Josie he said, this is hundreds of years ago. Hundreds. This was their medicine, this was their science. He was a polymath, an Islamic scholar that was well versed in other fields. These symptoms, they're not new. Medical professionals have been warning us, warning us for years that overeating and eating the wrong foods is very dangerous, very dangerous. So, because I love giving these little statistics and factoids, the CDC, Center for Disease Control, should keep up on those things. They publish some nice little studies. They have documented that people that are uh, largely overweight, obese, I know that's a scary term, and some people may take offense to that term. It's a medical term. 20% over your normal body weight. 
And there's other factors, et cetera, et cetera, that have to be considered. However, largely overweight, compared to those with a normal or healthy weight, they say are at increased risk for many serious diseases and health conditions, including the following. I'll mention a couple, because it's a long list. That's a whole khutbah in itself, to talk about the list of these diseases, that if you are largely, grossly overweight, you are susceptible, more likely, than someone of normal weight. The first one, all causes of death. Boom, we're done. Call it a day, right? You need to hear more? All causes of death, mortality. That's the number one right now. After that, high blood pressure, high levels of unhealthy cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, sleep apnea. I guess in that case, you're not getting enough sleep. Breathing problems, some cancers, low quality of life, mental illness such as clinical depression, anxiety, and other mental disorders, body pain and difficulty with physical functioning. Body pain and difficulty with physical functioning. From the companions, there were those that used to say, being overweight makes it difficult to pray, impedes physical motion, heavy. Brothers and sisters, the food we enjoy and we are blessed to have should be treated like fuel for the body. When we need to refuel the car, the car that we hopefully enjoy riding in, some of us driving our dream cars, when it's time to refuel, we don't just put any old thing in there, do we? I don't take my pristine Park Avenue and fill it with Pepsi Cola or Kool-Aid. I don't put water in there. I put what it needs. Hopefully that's good quality. And some of us are so into cars and automobiles, we'll pick particular gas stations based on the type of gasoline they provide. This one's better, higher octane, etc., etc. The body is the same way. You can't just put any old thing in there and expect it to function at peak performance. If food is abused, it can have a very negative impact not only on our health, but our performance. Our performance is impeded drastically. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this life, and bless us in the next guide us to that which he loves and is pleased with, to cure our ill, to pardon our sinners, and to free those who are strapped with debt. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.